Today we're going to talk about power factor and reactive factor. Uh, again, this is one of those things I could just kind of throw into the problems and say, oh, I can introduce it there, but really it's quite confusing the first time you learn it, but it just takes 10 minutes to understand it really, really well, and then all of your problems will benefit from it. I remember I was confused the first time I learned this. Okay, so what we're really going to talk about is the fact that in this enormous equation we've been studying for all this time, it seems that the most important part of it is this phase angle difference. Theta V minus theta I, it's popping up everywhere, and it turns out that this concept here of that phase angle is so important that we actually have kind of special name. Um, and we call this angle, theta V minus theta I, uh, we call it the power factor angle. All right? Because when you start changing the phase difference here, then it changes all these terms and then the, the instantaneous power curve looks totally different in all cases. We've talked about that so much, you're probably nauseous by now. Okay, so it's called the power factor angle, all right? But typically, you're not given this angle a lot of times in problems. You're given something related to it. We call it uh, the power factor, which we call PF, and that's the cosine of this angle. So a lot of times you'll be given the power factor, which is cosine theta V minus theta I. This is called power factor. So whereas this is the power factor angle, when you take the cosine of it, this is just called the power factor. All right, and then uh, because we have to make it even more complicated, we have something called the reactive factor, which will be the sine of the same angle, theta V minus theta I. So this is called the reactive factor. All right, why do we think we name them this way? Because for real power, the cosine of this angle pops up here and here, and so these terms you already know are important for real power. So that's why that's called the power factor. That's like, you can almost call it the real power factor, okay? The reactive factor is the sine of this angle, which pops up in the third term, which we talked about so much. So that's, that's important for reactive power, and that's why that's called reactive factor. So a lot of times in problems, you'll have a circuit, and it'll have some load out there, and it'll say something like, the power factor is 0.6. And then you'll need to use that piece of information to solve the problem. You'll need to know what that means. And what that means is the power factor, which is the cosine of this angle, is 0.6 in that case if I gave it to you that way. Right? And you're looking at that and you're like, wow, that's awesome. I'll just take, I'll, I, if I know the power factor is 0.6 or 0.8 or 0.9 or whatever, then I can just take the inverse cosine because it'll be equal to you know, 0.8 or something. I take the inverse cosine and then I find this angle. Once you find that angle, the theta V minus theta I, once you find that angle, you're golden because you can put it anywhere you want. You can, you can basically find the instantaneous power and do, do everything. Now, the problem is, in a lot of problems, you are given the power factor, but you're going to end up needing the reactive factor, the sine of this angle, because when you think about it, the cosine of the angle is here and here, so that takes care of this stuff, but if you want to figure out the third term, you're going to need to know what the sine of that angle is. So you're going to end up needing to figure out what the angle is in, on the road to figuring out what the reactive factor is. Let me ask you a question. Uh, and the bottom line is here, there's an ambiguity. If you're given the power factor and you're told to figure out what the reactive factor is, there's an ambiguity in going from here to here to figure this out. Let me explain exactly what that ambiguity really is. Let me give you an example, given. And this is what you might find. Power factor is equal to 0 0.5, okay? Find the reactive factor. All right. So you know the power factor is the cosine of this angle, and you know that the reactive power is, factor is the sine of the same angle. So all you have to do is knowing that the, the power factor is, the, is this guy, let me figure out what this angle is, and then I'll just stick it in here and figure out what the reactive factor is. Easy, right? Okay, so then I'll go over here and I'll say, well, the reactive factor is 0.5, so it'll be 0.5 is equal to the cosine of that angle, theta V minus theta I. All right, so this is the power factor. I'm just setting it equal to what I've been given. Now I'm gonna figure out what this angle is. So theta V minus theta I is equal to uh, the inverse cosine of 0 0.5. So you stick that in your calculator and you try to say, okay, theta V minus theta I is equal to, what's the inverse cosine of 0 0.5? Well, your calculator will give you 60 degrees. And you'll be like, oh, I'm, gr I'm done. But that's not the only answer. Actually, if you go think about it and look at the unit circle, there's another valid angle that works for this case. So it can be 60 degrees or negative 60 degrees. And the reason that it can be that way is because when you go back and look at what the plot of a cosine looks like, 
a cosine is an even function. It starts here, like this, like this. So if I know that the cosine of the angle is, let's say, 0.5, then is it going to be a positive angle that gives me that, or is it going to be the negative angle that gives me that? In both cases, since it's symmetrical, if I'm looking at, if I'm trying to figure out where the cosine is equal to 0.5, a positive angle could do it, and a negative angle could also do it, because this is symmetric like that, because the cosine function is symmetric like that. So the problem is, which one of these is the real angle? Because I can't really find the reactive factor without knowing that, right? Because then if I were to take this here, um, let's say if, um, if uh, we use 60 degrees, right, then we say the reactive factor is the sine of 60 degrees, theta V minus theta I, right, 60 degrees. In your calculator, you get 0 0.866, but if, we use negative 60 degrees, which is totally valid for the first part of the problem, then the reactive factor is the sine of negative 60 degrees, right? And then whenever you get that, you'll get negative 0 0.866. So you're trying to figure out what is the reactive factor, that's your problem, but see, you have two exact answers that are negatives of each other. So which one is correct? Okay, so the reason that this becomes a problem when you're given the power factor and trying to find the reactive factor is basically just a math problem. It comes down to trigonometry. The problem is that when you take the inverse cosine of a number, there's always two answers, basically. And how do you know which one's the right angle? Is it negative 60? Which would look more like a capacitor. Remember when phase angles are negative, approaching negative 90, it looks capacitive, all right? Or is it positive, which looks more inductive? which remember positive plus 90 degrees in the phase angle is inductive. So when you're positive phase angles, it looks more inductive. And when you're negative phase angles, it looks more capacitive. So that changes everything, everything. So you have to know which angle to pick in order to calculate the proper reactive factor because you're going to differ by uh, this guy here. So in order to, uh, I guess, fix this problem, we use words again. We use terminology. So usually you're not going to see something like the power factor is 0.5, the power factor is 0.9, the power factor is 0.3. You probably won't see that. What you're going to see is these descriptive words, one of which is called the lagging power factor. All right, what does lagging power factor mean? Okay, that means that current lags voltage. The word lagging, it always applies to what the current is doing related to the voltage, okay? That's how you remember this. So whenever you have that guy, when you have current lagging volt, when you have lagging power factor, you know that the current lags the voltage, all right? Now, what happens when current lags the voltage? In math terms, uh, whoops, I drew that a little too big. In math terms, theta V minus theta I is positive. Because when you think about it, if the current is lagging the voltage, that means this phase angle is bigger and this one's smaller because the current's lagging this guy, right? So this one's bigger, this one's smaller. So this difference is positive. So that means the phase angle's positive, all right? When this guy's positive, we've already talked about this many times, Q is positive. And we've, hopefully you can remember by now that when Q is positive, this is an inductive load. I'm writing all this down because this stuff, this stuff you'll actually use quite a bit in your problems. When you see lagging power factor, it's probably worth your time to just memorize that that's an inductive load. When you see lagging power factor, just, just know it's an inductor, okay? When it's an inductor, then you know Q is positive, you know the phase difference, whatever it is has got to be positive. It can't be negative because then it starts to look more capacitive, right? And current lags voltage. That's what the lagging part actually refers to. So. Whenever we come down here and write the other guy, what do you think the other thing's gonna be called? Instead of a lagging power factor, you might see a leading power factor. All right, so everything is gonna be opposite here. I'm gonna write it all down just, just so you can have a complete uh, thing, but everything's basically opposite of this. The current leads the voltage, okay? Therefore, theta V minus theta I, if this guy's bigger than this, then that means this must be negative. And whenever this phase angle is negative, when you take the sine of it, remember that goes into the sine function, Q is negative. 
and whenever Q is negative, it's capacitive. Okay, this is really important. So whenever you see, uh, hey, this uh, load has a leading power factor of um, 0.6, then you'll need to know, okay, the power factor means the cosine of the angle, okay? But the leading part helps me figure out what the angle really should be. Is it positive or negative? And in this case, when I see leading power factor, it tells me that angle needs to be negative, which tells me that Q is gonna be negative, which tells me that this is a capacitive load. So you start thinking about things in terms of positive, negative. Whenever you start seeing positive Qs, you're thinking inductors, you're thinking of lagging power factors. And whenever you think of uh, negative phase angles, negative Qs, capacitive loads, those are leading power factors. That's gonna take a little bit of time for you to get in your head. We could draw pictures, we could go all out and trying to figure this out, but at the end of the day, you just need to remember that leading power factors are capacitive, and that Q is gonna be negative in that case, and that the phase angle difference is gonna be negative in those cases. So if we go back to our original problem, let's say, I'm not really given this. I'm given that this is a leading power factor of 0 0.5. So the problem would be, you have a leading power factor of, uh, or let's do lagging power factor. Let's say that it's lagging power factor. Lagging power factor of 0 0.5, find the reactive factor. Okay, so I would do everything the same. I would stick it in here, find the inverse cosine, but now that it's lagging, I'm gonna know that the angle, the phase angle is gonna be positive because it's, it's basically inductive. So then I know that this is wrong, that this is the actual phase angle here, and then I use this guy, sine of 60, so then here we go. Notice that the reactive factor, which really the reactive factor, don't forget what it is, it's the sine of this angle which goes into the Q calculation for Q, okay? That gives me a positive number. Sine of a positive number is a positive number, so Q is gonna be positive in that case, so that supports the idea, of, just like I've written on the board, that it's inductive, if it's a lagging power factor. If it were specified as a leading power factor, I would choose this guy, that would come down to be this, which would give me a negative reactive factor, which would mean Q would end up being negative in the long run. I don't think there's much more to say. Watch this lesson a few times. I'm not doing any real problems in this lesson, I just want you to kind of understand the concept of what leading and lagging power factors are. They're just used to describe the load and the word leading or lagging really just helps you figure out if it's a positive or negative sign on the angle or a positive negative sign on the Q, same difference, okay? As we do problems, you'll see the utility in that because they'll give you the, hey, there's a leading power factor and you'll need to know that that means, hey, it's inductive or capacitive load. You'll need to figure that because the problem won't really tell you otherwise. So as we get into problems, you'll see that. So follow me on to the next section and we'll use this knowledge as we go forward. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.